It's movies, it's music, and yes, it's media. That generalization is just so I can keep it alliterative. Yes. But the point is, pretty bad. this is another haul focusing on those aforementioned things. But first, let's hear a little ditty from our pal, McBally. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he blows his snot into his hands. Yeah, he does. Anyway, hit that music first. All right, man, it's another month, and you know what that means. We just outed whoever was the nose guy. Yeah. Big if you time. haven't seen that video yet, it's either we didn't upload it yet and we're completely out of order, or you just haven't seen it because the channel sucks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Probably both. <laughs> <laughs> Getting no views. <laughs> yeah, we're scrubbing by on views, but we do thank the people that do view us. True, you guys are the bees knees. We love you, but not as much as I love this. Here. <laughs> we would kill you for this. This here, this here set that I found, man. Frank Miller's Man with No Fear Daredevil Run. Yeah, it's pretty. All rad. five for fifteen bucks. The origins of Daredevil is told through the insaniac yeah. Frank Miller's eyes. Love it. That was a good find, man. Yeah, it's I was like, cool. holy shit. And of course, I had to get my Archie 1941 just to get it more rustic. Yeah, that's weird. number two. Not a big fan. Um, hating? I'm just hating out of principle. Now, uh, I, I do want to throw in mine. Mm -hmm. I don't have it with me because I already arranged and everything. I don't want to mess it up again. Mm -hmm. But I did find a Max number one. I might have shown it last month, but I don't think I did. You did. Just wanted to point that out. Just uh, you're proud of it, I guess. I am. We'll really go with proud that. Of it. Instead of you totally forgot, we'll go with. I, I 100% forgot. I'm not gonna lie. Now you did get a video game. Yeah. yeah this is a Second Son, infamous Second Son. Yeah, I hear what's people. The, I hear a lot. Of, I hear a lot of people crying about this being their least favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the first one was okay. So and, you said, let's try this one that everybody says yeah, sucks. I, well, no. <laughs> It's one of those where I think it just people didn't like it because it was a new character and all that shit. Did you like it? Uh, I haven't played it. <laughs> I got Rigged. it. Cause, I got it because I, I I got it basically for three dollars with a coupon. So. All right, all right. So that's your one game. Yeah. Let's go to movies real quick here. Uh, this one I may have mentioned last month, but just in case, Insidious, super hard to find apparently at times on Blu-ray, so I had to get a used copy. And uh, you know, I know now that I that I got a used copy. There's gonna be like ten thousand new ones. Oh yeah. But this is one of my favorite James Wan pictures. You still haven't seen this one. I guarantee a blast. I know there's going to be those people out there like, well, it's not scary. I don't give a shit. It's a good movie. Yeah. And it was kind of uh, spooky. Plus, you're a Wanite. Plus, uh, I am a Wanite. Plus, uh, Insidious 2, which is, quote, creepy, creepy as, hell. as hell. according That's to my this, gimmick, damn it. To this blur. Oh, yeah, I'm stealing your gimmick. Sorry. Shit. I also like how uh, the uh, villain... Back here it looks like uh, the Leprechaun. Oh man, it's Isn't not thankfully. Warwick but... Davis is. I like Warwick. No, He's you mean cool uh, guy. You mean, uh, I didn't name? mean uh, the swag. Uh, the swag, horn swag. I didn't mean that Leprechaun. Uh, but yeah, great sequel. Uh, this is a series that I really enjoy. Even Part Three, which is it was the the lowest of the three, the least impressive of the three. It was enjoyable, but uh, yeah, it's one of those where the first one is is so good and it tells. The ultimate tale of confrontation. Yeah. So the rest are like, well, we already know that the first one was the ultimate tale. But part two was a really good follow-up. And part four was pretty damn good. Part three, though. Uh, it was okay. Taco Bell. You know it. Oh, shit. You got a freaking Nicolas Cage porno? Mandy. I haven't seen it yet, but already I know I'm going to love this uh -huh. film. It's uh, supposed to be, uh, quote, insanely violent and ethereally beautiful. I hear it's also astonishing. Uh, and I hear that Nicholas Gage gives the performance of a lifetime. Yeah. Or at least so it lets us know. Not a lot of features on this, but that's all right. I just want to see this film. It looked crazy, man. The, the trailer alone, even though the film is bad, you know it's going to have some good stuff in it. But I don't think it's going to be bad. I think it's going to be the proper amount of crazy and weird. Yeah. Psychedelic, maybe. Type of shit that you might be good with if you did mushrooms. I still think it's gonna be less weird than that that, that one where Nicolas Cage was a vampire and was just freaking insane for an hour well, and a half. Yeah, anything's better than vampires, kids. Especially this badass modern epic quote. Somebody. I like how we both now fist. both have, <laughs> <laughs> and I have two uh, DVD also. <laughs> yeah, man, I had to get this. It was two bucks at the Family Dollar. I was gonna go get uh, some honey buns, but I came back with this instead. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I borrowed that money, so uh, the person wasn't very pleased. But, but damn it, it's the man with the iron fist. Yeah, you had to sell ass again. It's awesome. 
Next, this is one of my favorites and a very underappreciated. Of Wes Craven's lesser known films, this is still pretty well known. It was a hit in the box office when it came out. But it's still very underappreciated because everybody just thinks of Scream and, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff. But I love this, man. This is one of this is one of three forays into black horror that Wes Craven did. And, and it, it's, it's awesome. It's a blend of humor and horror and just bizarre. It's got some of the most bizarre villains in this. They're, they're really crazy psychos. Uh, uh, BDSM centric psychos. It's pretty weird, man. Plus Ving Rhames. Oh, you know you Ving? like the Ving. And this is the Shop Factory version. So it's got all kind of cool goodies. Auto commentary. Does that have Ving uh, showering naked? Let's see. It doesn't have Ving showering yeah. naked, which should be a feature in all Ving movies. Yeah, that's true. Alas, no Ving should naked. Be a I just like saying his name, by the way. There should be a thing for Ving. Is Ving actually gay? No, I don't think so. I have a feeling he's actually gay, yeah, but anyway. I think he's secretly gay. Secretly gay. It's all right, Ving, you're cool. Uh, Phantom of... <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely suck him. Yeah. Uh, Phantom of the Opera, man. This is the Robert Englund version. 1989, directed by Dwight H. Little, who also did the third Texas Chainsaw movie in the old series. Did you know that Robert Englund was Freddy? Yeah, it's got this horrible tagline. <laughs> Robert Englund was Freddy. Now, he's the Phantom of the Opera, the motion picture, and all the new nightmare. Shit. Man, thanks for letting us know that he was Freddy 50 times. That aside, that horrible tagline aside... This is my absolute favorite version of the story of Phantom of the Opera. Bar none. And yes, I'm including the Lon Chaney version. I love this version. It's badass. It brings a modern spin. It has like a, you know, a modern framework to it. And then it goes back into a flashback in the past. The Faustian angle is played. And it's got some amazing gore effects in it. And it's not just like gore for gore's sake. It's, it's, if you read the original novel... It's a gory fucking novel. And it kind of went back to those roots. Really underappreciated. Very little known. This is my favorite Robert Englund role. Yes. But he was Freddy. That's right. That's what I was thinking when I was watching. I was like, man, he was Freddy. Now he's the Phantom. The motion picture. And I'll need nightmare. I'll need nightmare. <laughs> you got to throw that in. The Prestige. Two bucks, man. Again, that uh, foray to go get uh, Honey Buns. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> Turned into uh, five bucks to get two movies. Uh, Prestige this is possibly my favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Close Competitors, Inception, Dark Knight. But uh, <laughs> I'd have to pick that. this. <laughs> you have to throw that back Because it, it's hard, man. He's such a good filmmaker. Dunkirk? Fuck. But but this got, this got your fucking favorite actor, Hugh Jackman, in it. Oh, yeah. You know that you guy Gene that you Hackman? thought was Gene Hackman? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Christian Bale, one of my favorite actors. Michael Caine, of course. Scarlett. Ah, she's hot. Johansson and David fucking Bowie. The, as, the Coringa? The Coringa as Nikola Tesla. Shit. I mean, what else do you need, man? Yeah. And it's about, you know, illusionists and shit. You know, yeah. that's one of my favorite topics. Yeah, you do have an insanely large Chris Angel section, which is kind of disturbing. Mm -hmm. yep. I've been meaning right. to talk to you about that. <laughs> it's, it's this been, naked stand-up that's looking at me right now is not good. And it's been reduced in size, yeah. too. His penis, that is. By my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's really man. worn out. It's being... <laughs> <laughs> Repo, the genetic opera, a literal... It's a musical... But not the traditional music. It's literally structured like an opera. Everybody just sings their lines most yeah. of the time. Uh, starring Giles from fucking Buffy. Yeah, so that's the thing. And Alexa Pena Vega. That's the one thing he's done since Buffy. Yeah. And Alexa Pena Vega, uh, Bill Mosley, a <laughs> bunch of, you know. Paris Hilton. Genre, yeah, Paris Hilton's in there. Surprisingly directed by Darren Lynn Boosman, who did uh, Saw 2 and 3, 4. And, uh, you know, that 11-11 movie that everybody criticized. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, this, this is cool, man. It's stylistically yeah, pretty crazy. It's definitely a cult film. It's not a movie that's ever going to gain steam in the mainstream, but that's good. That's exactly where it should be. This is a this is a film for cult fans. I love it. You haven't seen it yet, but uh, I hope you like it when you do. Now, this I know you love. This is this is this was one of the movies. I don't mind you had watched movies before. This is one of the movies that inspired me as a kid. And that's El Mariachi and Desperado. I always wanted to get a coconut and, and just drink, drink from straight it. out of it. I did it once. wasn't good. How much do I love these movies? Uh, I mean, fuck, man. This is this is the reason I was going to go to film school. Ultimately, uh, didn't go even though I had a full paid scholarship. Yep. So that's stupid. 
Uh, although, you know, the chances of making it <laughs> are still super slim, even if you go. But the point is, I could have gone. And uh, But yeah, man, El Mariachi was a movie made for $7,000 by a Mexican-American. We're Mexican-American. He was just a hero, man. And he's a hero to filmmakers, uh, you know, up-and-coming filmmakers everywhere because he finds a way, Robert Rodriguez, the director, does, to just make things big on tiny budgets. And he did that the same with Desperado where he got like a $8 million budget, I think, or $7 million budget and made it look like a $20 million movie. And he did amp that up again every time. Love these movies, man. Love these movies. I gotta say, my favorite mariachi is still the first one. It is awesome, man. I always had, I always had a weird love affair with that dude as his as the character. Carlos Gallardo. Yeah, and then when he showed up in the second, I was like, <laughs> well, let me tell you, uh, uh, Carlos Gallardo played the mariachi in the first one, and, and Antonio Banderas replaced him in Desperado, which is a continuing uh, of the story, a continuance of the story. But they do kind of like the Evil Dead too, where they do a recap yeah. with him recast with. Carlos Gallardo recast with with Antonio Banderas, uh, but it is a sequel. It's just you don't have to see the first one to get what's going on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I kind of did miss him. I, I would like to have seen that. But then he shows up, and you're like, uh, yeah, he shows up as uh, Kino, I think, or Compa. I forgot which of the two. One of his assistants. Mm-hmm. Pretty awesome, man. Pretty awesome. And I gotta say, again, I love this movie so much, this series so much, that as you know, when I was locked up, I wrote a, a sequel to it and or sequel to the third one and I, I wrote a character just so i could cast if it ever got made which won't carlos gallardo in it because he is cool next running scared this is the only paul walker movie i like there i said Ooh. i know he's dead Shit. i'm not being disrespectful to his uh you know frying corpse i'm not gonna lie i don't even feel bad that he died it was his fault i mean it's still a human life you know what i'm well, saying yeah but i feel bad on the human level yeah but yeah, come on, man. You're well, racing. People are like, oh, it's a tragedy. I mean, he was <laughs> driving super fast. Yeah. What do you expect? It's ironic, his death is what I'll yeah. say. Yeah. That being said, he wasn't a great actor. No. Nah. And he wasn't a bunch of crap. Yeah. But this movie is fucking great. Is it? Oh, man. Oh, you didn't see this? Oh, man. It's so good. It is fantastic. I love this movie. It's like a Tarantino, you know, like a... Uh, I forgot his name. The fucking director of Boondocks made Boondocks and it's basically like a Tarantino rip off. Duffy. But yeah. Troy Duffy, I think. Yes. He made uh, Boondocks and it's kind of like a Tarantino knockoff, but it's good on its own. Yeah. This is kind of the feeling you get with this. It's Tarantino-esque, but it's so good on its own. It's awesome, man. It's got that wit. It's got the uber violence. Is Paul good in it? Paul. Look, the, the blurb in the front, blurbs that you so love, makes Kill Bill look like Sesame Street. Mm. I mean, whoop. Does it say Paul's actually good in this one? <laughs> Paul's dead in this one. Uh, <clears throat> next is one of my favorites, Tales from the Hood, an anthology story. I recently rewatched this because I wanted to, to see the new one. Yeah. Ooh, a new one, though. <laughs> uh, but the original Tales from the Hood is a fucking classic. You know, it was a box office failure when it came out, but it just garnered so much heat because it would replay it a lot on TV. And... It's now a minted classic. I know you've seen this, and I, I believe yeah, you liked it, was it quite a, long a bit. Time ago, but yeah, I remember liking it. And, and I love how loyal it is to the feeling of EC Comics. It's on par with Creepshow in that. In fact, it does better than Creepshow in terms of giving you that moralistic, uh, twisted tale thing. It only ha- it just has this since it's about and in the community of, of African Americans. It has an ulterior motive, and it does that pretty well too. It's awesome. Despite some of its shortcomings, yeah. i.e. some of the lame effects. Yeah, it's pretty good, but I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of Snoop Dogg's The Hood of Horror. Fuck Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror. <laughs> Snoop Dogg should never fucking act, dude. He's fucking horrid. You know who was worse than him in that, though? Hmm. Because, uh, George Costanza. Ah, oh, fuck, his man. accent. What was he supposed to be, British? I don't know. Shit. George Costanza. That's his name, by yeah. the way. Speaking of George Costanza, he's not in fucking Valhalla because he sucks. Definitely is. He's going straight to. Why hell. am I saying that? <laughs> he's like my favorite character on Seinfeld. And anyway, yeah, but who the horror? Dude. This is uh, the only Marvel movie I think I own. I'm pretty sure this is. I mean, unless you count Spider-Man Two, which I have for some reason. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really like this movie. I know you were kind of divided on some of most of it, and I get why, especially the Hulk, Hulk stuff. Hulk's butt. But I really absolutely love this movie. So it's impossible to find this cheap. So I just found a deal that it had buy two used, get one free. Yeah. So technically, it I got this used. one free because I got all of the 
used ones at the same price level. Yeah, so basically, the only way you would pay for a Marvel movie is if you got it it's free. free. Yeah. But yeah, I like this. I don't this. blame you. This. this is a racket they're running. It is a racket, man. And it, it, it pisses me off that now they have Fox and they're going to continue that racket yeah. possibly. Next is one of my favorite movies of this year, Upgrade. You got to see this, man. It's like The Crow meets Robo, Robocop meets a horror movie. It's fucking badass, man. I love Upgrade. Some fantastic action in this. Just a neat-ass movie. It's just a neat sci-fi fucking movie. Very dark in tone. Check this and, sucker out. Interestingly enough, the blur blurb in the back says, it's just a neat-ass movie. Ahab. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they resorted to me. I also like the tagline, but most of all, I like this fucking I annoying that. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes fresh certified I, sticker on I hate that. that shit. Yeah. Now, I mentioned this in my favorite horror movie video, and... Uh, I now say that it has replaced Suspiria as my favorite. This is The Witch. Or for some reason people insist on saying it with a V. It's not a V, you fool. But anyway, whatever. The Witch. Legitimately spooky piece. That might be in the other one. Black Phillip. You want to live deliciously is my question to you. Wrong Turn. Three pack. Uh... I like the wrong turn movies. Well, at least the first three. I don't know about the rest. But I, I really like the first one. It was a PG-13 movie. And even then, it delivered pretty well. And Wrong Turn 2 has Henry Rollins as a survivalist maniac. So that's cool. And it's incredibly bloody and tongue-in-cheek. Part 3 was alright. <laughs> alright? I don't remember Part 3 very well. But I remember enjoying it. This is another hillbilly classic. And it has Robert Englund. 2001 Maniacs. Oh, Pushing Up Daisies? Pushing Up Daisies. This is a comedy, horror comedy. A romp at that. Lots of uh, controversial humor in it. Blowjobs. <laughs> I like Hillbillies. I like you didn't explain the Pushing Up <laughs> Daisies. You just gotta see it to believe yeah, it. If you like uh, people folding armadillos. This, this is, is the movie, movie for you. If you like blowjobs with metal teeth, this is the movie for you. Mm. If you like Robert Englund as a racist old southern man. Ghost, no less. This is the movie for you. If you like Travis Tritt being a <laughs> dork, this is the movie for you. You I like pushing up Daisy. This is in my top fucking three, I'm going to say four to be safe, horror movies ever since I saw it. A Dark Song. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, I'm going to probably do a video on it. Uh, we have plans for a separate channel. We're probably going to do that. Uh, more serious reviews uh, style. But whatever the case, I won't even explain it. You just got to see this. It's amazing, man. I love this movie. Next is Autopsy of Jane Doe, which has got a lot of uh, good press. Uh, Stephen, C Stephen King says, see it, but not alone. So, uh, you know, he likes weird stuff sometimes. And yeah. he directed a shitty movie, so I trust him. Yeah. But he is the boy. King, that is. So I got to check this out. Oh, you got that for me. Black Swan. No explanation needed. It's a swan in Even if this was a shitty movie and has a lesbian scene between, between that yeah, report, I've seen that scene. So that's a fucking thing. They also like are now like, um, you know, have health problems because of this movie. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It is a Darren Aronofsky movie, and I love Darren Aronofsky ever since Pie. Of course, uh, recently you saw Noah with me. I just I, love Darren Aronofsky, man. He's he's awesome. My favorite Aronofsky is uh, Pumpkin Pie. Tastes good. Mm, pumpkin Pie. I had some earlier. It was delicious and thought-provoking. <laughs> you know what isn't thought-provoking? Chronicle. Because you don't have to think. All you got to do is realize this is a good movie that Josh Trank made, followed by a piece of shit like Fantastic Four. Woo! But this was great, man. This is a fantastic movie. Four! Found footage-style superhero flick. Uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't put it on par with Unbreakable because it has a steadier clip more than the paced one. But it's in that vein, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a more realistic approach. Very good. Now, this is the only movie I actually paid bucks for, just like last time within The Mouth of Madness. That's Stuart Gordon's adaptation of The Shadows Over Innsmouth called Dagon. Yeah, he used to be awesome. a pretty big fan of this flick. Mm -hmm. I know you love it. There's a, little, uh, there's a little octopus guy in it at one point. A little octo dude. Yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. Octo mom makes her film debut. <laughs> she in there. really does. Yeah, man, this is a... Uh, if you're a Lovecraft fan, this... I don't see this disappointing unless you're a fucking stuffy douchebag. Yeah, or unless you think... There's got to be little freaking tentacles every two seconds. So you do yeah. get that too. You do get some tentacles in this. But this is a fairly good, loyal adaptation despite uh, the change of setting and time. 
of the Shadows Over Innsmouth, man. It follows all the beats. It has everything in there. Plus, it throws in elements of the greater mythos. So, a win. I love this movie. Next is Excision. This is a movie that I just happened to see on Shudder when a friend let me have access to, to his Shudder because I can't afford it. And I just saw it on a lark, and boy, am I glad I saw it. This is like Carrie meets May. Two movies which I already love, Carrie and May. Uh, but this is like a mixture of those two things with its own very dark edge. Uh, to quote this guy in the back. Damn it. <laughs> this is one you don't want to miss. I saw you straining. I was waiting, dude. I was trying. I was trying. This is one you don't want to miss. And really, you don't, man. If, if, if strange, almost Lynchian horror is your thing, then this is right up your alley. And if you liked Carrier May, which were both excellent female-led horror movies, this is something you should see. It is fantastic. It is truly unique and scary, says this other guy. <laughs> or I'm just fucking stealing your game. Yeah, it's not good. Next and finally is The Fly. <laughs> Another cheapie that I found, but it's cheap, but it's great, man. I had to do it. You have to. This is one of the classics, yeah. man. I know you love this. Grundle flies in it. <laughs> it's just a massive grundle. Uh, yeah, man. This is, I mean, what can you say about The Fly that hasn't already been said? It's fucking amazing. Cronenberg's uh, first foray into big blockbuster-style filmmaking still very Cronenbergian yeah. awesome actually there is one final thing and this is the one that I Grundle. uh wanted the most and this is one of my favorite I'm reversed with Clyde Barker everybody else like I like Hellraiser the most he only directed three movies Hellraiser Nightbreed and Lord of Illusions and usually people like them in that order I'm reverse I like Lord of Illusions the most Nightbreed second and Hellraiser third I love Lord of the Rings Lord of the Rings Lord of Illusions yeah, Lord of the Rings is pretty good too oh yeah obviously I like Grimly and Grandalf yeah. and Aragon. Yeah. No explanation. No explanation as to why we've just uh, given the wrong names. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I had actually not held, I had not bought this because one, no money. And two, I thought it didn't include the director's cut. And that pissed me off. It was a Shot Factory release. I was like, what the fuck, man? You You're, shouting, you're shouting at them. I was, man. But it does. It does contain the unrated director's cut, which is the way to see this. It still unnerves me, this movie. And it's such a unique blend of noir and horror. And it has, of course, one of my favorite Barker characters, Harry Damore. Love that. Now you got some music. Yep. Got some classics here. Yeah, got a grundle. Got Dio's The Last in Line. Yeah, now it's worth a note. This is not the remastered audio. So it so stinks. It kind, of, it kind of sounds like a grimy grundle. But it is still Dio. And Dio's pretty rad. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Dio. He likes um, he likes to wear weird outfits. He's also dead. Men of short stature that are currently rotting are usually a good way to go. Yep. Uh, but yeah, man, The Last in Line has some classic tracks. It's Dio, man. Yeah, I mean, mm. that's all you need to know, really. The Last in Line. It doesn't sound like that? No. Although that audio. Yeah. <laughs> Next, uh, this is a... Kind of like a remix album uh, for Modest Yahoo, who, if you don't know, uh, used to be a Hasidic Jew that uh, reggae rapped. Yep. He's no longer a Hasidic Jew, but he's still, he's still a Jew raps. and he's still reggae rap, so that's awesome. Uh, yeah, man. I, you know, when I first uh, discovered Modest Yahoo, it was on a lark. And the only thing that made me buy Live at Stubbs was the fact that he was a Hasidic Jew that reggae yeah, rapped. I literally asked you, why did you get that? And you're like, because he's a Hasidic Jew that reggae rap. And yep. I was like, all right. I need no other reason than that. But I got to say, um, I had that album too. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Arizona, it was a, it was not a great time when it came to entertainment. It was an album a of solace. A lot of farts were played in that household. Mm -hmm. A lot of high school musical. We're all in this together. Get your head in the game, that kind of shit. <laughs> you but, were in hell, basically. Yeah, but I had my little CD player, and I was blasting that Matis through my little reggae raps in the garage. Mm -hmm. Let's just say some people might have heard me reggae rapping in the garage. And they were like, by. that's definitely not a Jewish guy yes, on account of all the pork he's eating. That's a fat guy, naked. And I was. <laughs> naked um, reggae rapping aside, though. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah, Live at Stubbs is a classic live album. One of the few live albums that is just fantastic and electric. This, however, is not that album. No. <laughs> it is a remix album, but you got it mainly because, one, at my prompting, but that's because I saw that it included the Live at Israel concert yeah. DVD. So that's cool. Plus, it has some cool remixes and shit. So that's pretty neat, man. I do want to point out that I recently found his first album, mm -hmm. not Live at Stubbs, the actual first mm -hmm. album. And I downloaded it. Haven't heard it yet, but we will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
But until then, I found a second one. Not um, counting stubs. Youth. Awesome. It's got Jerusalem. So yeah, that's cool. Jerusalem, King Without a Crown. I mean, you can't go wrong with this. The guy's fucking awesome. He's great. He's still great, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Looking like Andy Samberg. Some, yeah. Without the beard, he's Andy Sambergian. Uh, some people might be turned off by the fact that there's a like a spiritual slant to a lot of his yeah. stuff. But I I'm actually really Jew. enjoy that. I'm not a Jew, and I enjoy it. I enjoy you it. it. I enjoy it too. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, man. I love I love Modest Yahoo. Kind of wanted to grow a big ass beard and little curls yeah. and shit. I want to start reggae his, rapping. Suck on his beard. Mm. This is my reggae rap. Yeah. <laughs> it involves no vocals. No, I was trying to do this. It was really weird when people were passing by and I was naked doing this, all sweaty and shit. <laughs> Blathered in pork grease. Yep. Next is Dwight Yoakam's Gone album. It was gone That's once I is, saw right? it. Yep. Yeah, gone. Now, this is a promotional copy again that you found. So that's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, but it is the whole album, of course. Again, mm. can't go wrong with this guy. I'm missing one of them, but I also had the one with Things Change. For mm. some reason, mm -hmm. it's not here. I guess a Thousand Miles to Nowhere, I believe it is. Uh, so, yeah, I found two promotional albums that were cool. So that's again, awesome. <sighs> and then another Dwight Oakum. Dwight Oakum. This one is... I can't read this cursive. What is this? Buenas noches from a lonely room. Again, man, with Dwight Yoakam, you could just pick up any album. And yeah. you're, you're picking up a winner. Um, uh, They also had the record, the vinyl of this, and I wanted to get it. But I was also poor, so I got the CD. Sometimes you got to go for the cheap route. Let me tell you right now, vinyls are in style right now. It has his tapes for some reason. Yeah. So that just means in a few years, CDs are going to come back in some form or another. And we're stocking up. Because <laughs> next up, I got Elote. <laughs> Fucking elote, uh, sigue al. How do you say leader in Spanish? Leader, I think. <laughs> I think that's how you say uh, it. Yeah, man, follow the leader from Corn. It's just a classic album. Guardian hates them. And it was cheap. He does? Yeah, I think so. I think it was X or some shit. Oh, uh, well. I can't. If I judged shit on on what my ex liked, you clean that. On what my ex liked, well, then I'd like nothing. Yeah. But the point is, this is a classic album for a reason. Pretty cool, man. Speaking of classic albums, question mark? Question mark. This was the first time uh, people were like, I like Garth, right? <laughs> it's in pieces. I like in pieces. Yeah, I love in pieces. But it was the first time people were like, he's cool, right, guys? <laughs> we like him, right? <laughs> but it wasn't until Fresh Horses when they were like, oh, this is a thing we're listening to? And then Sevens come along and they're like, oh man. I thought you loved Fresh Horses. I love Fresh Horses too. I just people. Sevens though. Yeah. yeah sevens. Is, sevens is half a really good album. Sevens, if you exclude a lot of the tracks, is a good album. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. So we're saying the same thing. But Pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, this was the first time people doubted Garth. And, yeah. uh, this, but will, it's a good album. I will man. say this has two of my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. Night Will Only Know. Mm -hmm. And The Red Strokes. Mm -hmm. Darker um, theme songs. Yeah. That was brand new too. I also like uh, Night I Call the Old Man Out. Good yeah, one. me too. But I, <laughs> I have a I have a freaking thing, bone to pick with this. The selection is almost perfectly like perfect in the way that it's arranged. Mm -hmm. um, some songs are kind of stanky, like American Honky Tonk Bar Association, but the way they're arranged is fine. The perfect end to this album is the um, the Night Will Only Know. It is an outro song with kind of an even eerie kind of musical outro through to it. But then they throw in a freaking cowboy song after that. Granted, I've never heard a cowboy song because not only know is the perfect end to the album. Why would you even throw this turd in there? So even though a cowboy song might be the greatest Garth song ever, I've never heard it and refuse to hear it because of that. Yeah, it's not great. And it's definitely not. It shouldn't be in the album. The limited series also has some stankers thrown in, so this one doesn't have those, thankfully. Next, Lady Sovereigns. Uh debut and apparently only one no no she she did a follow-up to it and that was it lady sovereign was a dyke from uh britain yep. <laughs> uh she was tiny yep uh but she was uh, when she was a shop so that's the thing but uh you know she did that garage style music from uh from over there which is basically their version of rap and you know, she even had some um, success over here in the States for a brief moment. Yeah, I remember I saw her on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Mm -hmm. Back when I was a Jimmy Kimmelite. Uh, but then some weirdo decided that he loved her and wanted to take her out on a 
date on a yacht. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did that probably because the record company was like, this is good publicity. And then after that, she started like kind of falling off the grid a little. All like, right. Yeah, I don't kind of want to be doing this and she anymore. she got sick, apparently. Yeah, and then she revealed she was a total Dicotron. Yep. And that she didn't really like going through the process of the record company's puppeteering. And uh, she released a second album, which I also enjoyed. And uh, that was it. If she's done something after that, I haven't heard of it. At least no, not stateside. Last, last I heard, she was ill. So she, that's a thing. So she stopped touring and all that shit. Anyway. So that's a thing. But I you can also redeem your free uh, track from Best Buy. Yay. Now it is 11 years out of date, <laughs> but we will be giving that away. <laughs> free. I also got the latest Scott Joplin joint. Um, <laughs> Scotty Jops. It's just him. Uh, sounds of him rotting in the grave. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. This is actually B.B. King, of course. Master. A master of the blues. He's the king. He is BB. the king. Or was Blues it? Wait, did he die holes. already? Yeah, he died, right? Yeah, I think so. I know he had the Beatus. Um, yeah, that's actually what BB, B, uh, Beatus Bunghole King is his name. <laughs> Beatus. Got apostrophe Beatus. Yeah. Anyway, Beatus Bunghole King is, uh, you know, what? Do I need to explain the man? No. Awesome. Next. Scott Joplin's dad, I hear. Next is uh, something I had to recommend to you. This is Link Ray and the Ray Men. Now, I haven't heard this specific album, although I may have heard some tracks from it. But it's fucking badass, man. A little bit of uh, kind of like a rockabilly vibe at times. Some flavorings from the Southwest. Was he like... Bong, bong, bong. And, of course, the stupid-ass cover. But yeah. more important, stupid-ass back cover. Yeah. Licks. Now, I, I'm, I am missing three CDs. One that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. The Talking Heads Greatest Hits. And uh, the latest Greta Van Fleet release. Which has been uh, apparently... Divisive. Um, yeah, there's been some controversy. I just want to say that Pitchfork guy can go straight to hell. Pretentious piece of shit. Yep. And uh, But I didn't bring him, I guess. I guess not. But you did but bring I this did bring this. Fest. And I don't regret it. Barbie Girl single from Aqua. <laughs> Your weird obsession with Aqua has gotten out of control to the point where you're buying a single. Literally, doesn't even have any remixes. It's just one song. Yeah, it's yeah, and it's not even like the album version. It's the radio edit yeah. <laughs> of the song. I have the full album, and yet I still bought this. And yeah, on the plus side, it's presented an Aquascope, yeah. so that's a thing. And uh, this was before uh, Lena was hot. All right. <laughs> Say end it with that. <laughs> Renee was pretty hot, though. <laughs> <laughs> Renee's always up. Yeah. I want to see what condition. I want to see how much they played this sucker. Not at all. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to pop that baby in and be like, wiki wiki. <laughs> Get Michael Clark Duncan up in that bitch. His corpse? Anyway, this is us. That's Michael Clark Duncan's corpse over there. Man, I miss Michael Clark though. Yeah. Anyway, tell us what you think about this stupid ass haul. We certainly regret it. Hit like, share, subscribe, those notification buttons because we are in fact out of here.